Hi. The purpose of this video is to show you a little bit about how to draw a diagram for a curved mirror that is a diverging convex mirror. The reason I know this is a diverging convex mirror compared to a concave converging mirror is just the placement of the object itself. Because I place the object out here, the only way that I could pre be producing an image is if I know this side over here is the shiny side. I start placing an object behind a mirror, I'm not going to get anything happening. But because it is a diverging convex mirror, the focal point and the center are behind the mirror on the virtual side of the mirror. A lot of times I hear from students that they just don't like these particular mirror diagrams because they just seem a little bit weird the way that they work. What I would counter with that is um, that actually once you've drawn these diagrams once, you're probably going to be pretty good with them because although there are different things that we could try to do with the exact drawing in these diagrams, you quite often get the exact same results. I'm basically looking in this diagram without drawing anything, I'm expecting to get a erect virtual diminished image. That's just the way these work. I still follow the same three rules that I would usually use when I'm drawing a concave converging mirror. It's just I got to be really careful because on a diverging mirror, everything that happens on this side is all about rays of light spreading out. That's why we call it diverging. And that means that I don't really expect to have rays of light that are going to converge on this side and produce an image for me. Instead, because the rays of light diverge over here, I can expect that reflected virtual rays will converge on this side and that's going to be producing the image for me. So the rays that I'm going to draw for myself, for starters at least, I'm going to go with the same sort of stuff that I do on a concave converging mirror. I'm going to draw a ray of light that is traveling parallel to the principal axis. So there it is ray of light, an incident ray of light comes in, strikes on the mirrored surface. Now I know that the rule for a ray parallel to the principal axis is that it reflects through the focal point, the focus right here. I know that in reality a true ray of light, a real ray of light can't reflect behind the mirror, but a virtual ray could give it the appearance as though it had reflected through that focus. So what I do is I line up with this point where my incident ray hit the mirror and the focal point. I line it up like this and I'm going to draw this as a dotted ray because it's virtual. And then I extend it off like that on the real side as my true real reflected ray. But I know that because that's a reflected ray, it could, even behind the mirror's a dotted line, tell me where that image is going to be appearing. So that means now that I've done one of my rays, I'm going to have to draw a second ray. For the second ray on these diverging convex mirror diagrams, I usually jump to the rule that says a ray through the center reflects through the center, because I just find that it's usually easier to draw on these. Probably most students are going to have a bit more success with it. So for that one, I go from, again, the same spot on my object, and I aim all the way back here to the center. And I'm going to have to draw part of it as a solid ray coming like that. And then as soon as I go behind the mirror, I know that I have to become dotted as a virtual ray. Like that. Okay? Now this is kind of weird on this part, because this is the incident ray, and the reflected ray. It comes in and it bounces off. And so what I basically got on the real side is reflections, reflected rays, that are spreading apart. They're not going to cross on this side. But if you check out here, because this dotted line, you say, oh, but that was the incident ray, but it is its own, it also lines up exactly with its own reflection ray. That means that this dotted line is a virtual reflected ray, and this dotted line is a virtual reflected ray, and they're crossing right there. That means that I now know the location of my virtual image. I place the tail of the image on the principal axis, just like it was in the object, and because everything came off of the head of the object, I know the head of my image will be right there. So I'm going to line this up, and notice I'm drawing it as dotted lines, 
because I know that nothing can actually be real behind there. There's nothing actually there. I'm going to label it as I. I'm seeing that I've got a virtual, erect, diminished image produced by this. Now the third rule in this one that we could draw, a lot of times people get kind of confused with it because they usually extend the wrong part behind the mirror. You have to remember it's only reflected rays that can extend behind the mirror. The third rule does say though that a ray through the focus reflects parallel to the principal axis. So what I do if I want to draw the third rule, which right now with just these two rules drawn, I'm done. I walk away from this, I'm a happy person, I've got everything done. But I just want to show you how the third rule would be drawn. I would go from the object, aiming down here to the focus. Now this is the problem. A lot of people take this and extend it behind, but I can't. This is an incident ray. It doesn't belong going behind. It's only a reflected ray that does. The reflected ray goes bouncing off parallel to the principal axis. That's the one that I can extend behind the mirror like that. So there's my reflected ray. And you can actually see in this diagram, things actually lined up quite nicely. All of my reflected rays pretty much did hit in one spot. So I'm actually going to call that one a success. It actually worked out quite nicely for us. So, that's how you can draw a diagram for a diverging convex mirror. Usually, uh, you're going to have diagrams that would look pretty much like this again and again. There's not a lot of variation. There's not as much variation in these diagrams, usually. So, good luck with these, and bye-bye.